Hello, my name is Michelle Noonan from Divi Soup and in recipe number 26 I'm going to show you how to use the tabs module for content navigation. So for our ingredients we're going to need the Divi theme from Elegant Themes and some images to use in our tabs module. Now I'm using images that are 1920 by 1080 pixels but you can use any size that you want. It's going to take us around 15 minutes to do this and to start off we're going to set up the module. So before we start this is what we're going to create. It looks more like a slider with navigation than it does a tabs module and that's the point of the tutorial and this will scale nicely for standard width, full width and full width with zero gutters and it's also got a different appearance on desktop, tablet and mobile. So to get started you're going to add a new page and then insert a single column and the tabs module. So that's our prep done, now time for the method. So firstly you want to open up the row settings and decide whether you want to make this a full width or a standard width and whether you want to have gutters or not. I'm going to leave this as it is at the moment. I'm just going to have a standard width and the standard gutter settings. So once you've changed the settings here, just save and exit. And then open up the tabs module settings. Go into the custom CSS tab and you're going to add a custom CSS class of ds-tab-navigation. Next, go into the Advanced Design Settings tab and we're going to adjust some settings in here. So you want to set the active tab color and I'm just going to use a black with some transparency and then the inactive tab color as well. I'm going to use the same color but you can use a different color for the inactive tab if you want to. Next, you want to select your font so I'm going to use Railway, but you can use whatever you like. And your tab font size, I'm going to go for 16 pixels. Now you don't need to set the tablet or mobile font sizes because we're going to actually manage that in the CSS with percentages so that your text is going to scale nicely. Then you want to set your tab text color. So I'm going to go for white. And then any adjustments you might want to make to your letter spacing or your line height. And then your body font, I'm going to use Railway again. And your body font size. And then your body text colour. So again, I'm going to use white. And then for your background colour, you want to set this to transparent. And then just leave the background image and the border alone. So once you've done all that, head on over to your general settings and you want to begin adding your tabs. So you can give them a title and then you need to add in some HTML. So the first thing you want to do is add an image and this is going to be our background image. So if I just grab this first image I have here and we need to give this image a class of DS tabs image. So I'm just going to add that in. because we're applying some styling to the image within the CSS. And then you want to add the rest of your content. So the first thing we're going to do is set up a div so that we can move the text over the top of the image. So we're going to give that div a class as well of DS tabs text. And then next we're going to add a title uh, with an H2 element. And then we're going to add a paragraph with a class as well. And the class for the paragraph is DS tabs body. And 
and then you want to add in your text that you're going to use for the body so I'm just going to put some filler text and then we're going to add a link as well so the link can be wherever you want to go another page on the site or off site it uh, it's entirely up to you and then we just need to close the div and that's our tab done so if we just save and exit that and just give it a quick preview so you can see we've got our image in the tab we've got a tab here and we've got some color on it as well and then our body text is white so we can't see it at the moment so we've got our title our text and our link and that's what it's going to look like as standard with no styling so once you've done that then you want to duplicate this for however many tabs you want to use and then just go in and change your images and your text for each tab so once you've added all your tabs and changed out all your content save and exit and then we'll just have another little preview of that so as you can see we've got all, all our content and we can see that our tabs are changing nicely but our text is still at the bottom and our tabs aren't really lined up very nicely so we need to go and add some CSS now before we do let's just go through and see what the CSS is doing okay so the first section of CSS here we're just removing some padding and setting a background color for the tabs and the reason we're setting a background color is during the transition where the images change this is the color that's going to show so you probably want it to be something similar to either your website color scheme or the general color of your images so I'm using black for this and then we're just removing some padding and borders that we don't need in this next section what we're doing is we're styling our tab controls so initially we're positioning our tab controls absolutely so that they sit over the image rather than above them and then we're setting a height for the tabs and then we're aligning the text to the center both horizontally and vertically in this next section this is where we set the width of the tabs to make them evenly spaced so they take up the whole width of the module and there's no space after the last tab now I'm using eight tabs so you'll see that both of my selectors have the number eight in them if you're using a different number of tabs then you just need to change that number eight to whichever number of tabs that you're using and then the width is set at 12.5 percent so 100 divided by 8 is 12.5 so that's evenly spacing my tabs if you're changing the number of tabs that you're going to have you need to divide 100 by your number of tabs to get your width percentage next we're just setting some styling for the active tab and positioning it relatively so that we can then add some styling with the before pseudo element and position this absolutely so that we can add the line effect that appears when you click on the tab and then this next bit is all part of the animation for the line under the tab here we're just making sure that the width of our image is a hundred percent so if you have anyone viewing on extra large screens even if you have an image with a pixel width which is less than the size of the screen it will scale the image up here we're styling the content of the tab so this is the text within the tab the link and the h2 title element and then here we're also adding the same line effect to the link within the text of the module and finally we've got our media queries so here we're changing the appearance slightly for smaller screens we're reducing the size of the tab so that we get more viewing space and we're using percentages to reduce the size of the fonts on smaller screens so you want to grab all of this CSS and then you can either put that in your child theme style sheet Divi options custom CSS box 
or as I'm doing here, the page specific CSS box. And then if we preview that, you'll see now we've got our lovely styling. It looks just like the demo. And if we take a look at how this would look on a smaller screen, So here we've got an iPhone 6 size, so you can see it works with the tabs to the left of the image for iPhone. And then change this to iPad, and we've got two rows of tabs. Now, as I said previously, this will scale nicely uh, if you want to use it full width. So if I just pop back into the row settings and change this to full width with zero gutters, so you can see that everything basically looks the same. It's just full width rather than standard width. And then obviously we can also remove the zero gutter and just have it a nice standard full width with some space around the edges. And that's it. For the accompanying blog post for this recipe and to grab the CSS and the HTML that goes with it, you can head on over to divisoup.com forward slash r26. You can also get the ready-made layout for free. And if you enjoyed this recipe, you can also sign up to my newsletter where you'll get all my latest content straight to your inbox. Thanks for watching.